Hey everybody, welcome to our June compilation video. For the new subscribers, we do this once a month. This will tell you all of the kits to expect to be released by all of the manufacturers in the month of June. So, we have uh, releases from uh, pretty much all the domestic guys this month, as well as several of the uh, overseas companies. So, let's just hop right on into it here. On the domestic side of things, we expect this month to get out of Mobius, the uh, 1952 Hudson Hornet. This is a uh, coupe or, uh, I don't know if, yeah, I guess but technically it's a coupe, not a sedan, but uh, this is a roofed version, if you will. There was a 52 Hudson Hornet convertible, you may recall, several years ago. Uh, this is a Hudson Hornet coupe like the 53 was. Uh, this will have the 52 coupe specific interior, as well as including the wire wheels in one of the 52-53 body styles for the first time. Uh, those wire wheels are the ones that came with the 54 Hudsons uh, that came out last year. So uh, something to look forward to uh, if you happen to be a hyper Hudson fan and need that specific interior. Um, I know that I was considering one point in time kit bashing, you know, the kit bashing a 52 and 53 together to create a 52 uh, coupe simply because the uh, 52 uh, convertible comes with the 53 grill uh, chrome as well just because of the uh, you know the, they didn't gate it off I think you can actually legitimately make a 53 Hudson convertible out of that 52 Hudson convertible because it has the 53 uh, grill and whatnot but it turns out I would have been uh, incorrect in my assumption that you can make a 52 coupe out of it as well because you need this specific interior. So, uh, Going on from there to Ravel, uh, they are releasing three kits this month, and two of them are domestic. One of them is a Ravel of Germany import. The domestic stuff are the first of the build and, well, the first, they are the build and play kits for the, for the uh, third quarter, and they are the 120th scale mystery machine, the van from the Scooby-Doo show. This is going to be a 39-piece kit. It's going to be molded out of ABS plastic rather than your traditional uh, styrene that you would get a regular model kit out of. Uh, you know, being a build and play, you shouldn't need to glue anything, but, it, you know, if you have kids and they're rambunctious and they're having to break something and you want to fix it on this, you will need, uh, you know, either to get yourself some uh, Tamiya glue for ABS plastic, or, of course, you'll stand by some super glue or 3-5, 10-minute epoxy, whatever your pr preference of drying team time is on your epoxy. You'll be molded in that sort of uh, creamish beige pink salmon color. Uh, the flowers and everything will be, uh, you know, peel and stick vinyl stickers like they normally are in a snap type. And uh, that, of course, does come with the uh, various figures for uh, what uh, Daphne, Fred, and Scooby Doo. Then they're going to be doing the uh, 2018 Mustang GT Bold and Play. This is a 13 piece kit, uh, I believe. Although I don't know for sure, I've seen rumors of it, and I can't I can't verify. So uh, we'll you know have to wait until the kit comes out. But supposedly there are headlights in it this time, rather than it just being some silver painted areas like it was on the earlier Mustang build and plays. Um, you know there are what six more pieces in this than there were in the last one. So we'll see what those six pieces uh, you know consist of. And then the Ravel of Germany uh, import, this will be the official U.S. distribution for this kit, is the first of the two Porsche 934 RSRs. This time you're going to get the Valiant uh, livery. This is the one that's like seafoam green. Uh, the product description for this is epic in the sense of the, I don't know who writes the Ravel.com uh, product descriptions, but this, it, it, it's, it's, it's a doozy, let's put it that way. Uh, First of all, it invokes Tamiya. I'm sure, sure they could, you know, really live without that. Uh, it says that the Tamiya kit is uh, 40 years old, when it is, in fact, 4 years old. It is based on the 40-year-old 112 scale kit that's been patterned down to 124 scale. However, the actual kit itself is not 40 years old. Uh, and then makes the reference to the fact that the Jägermeister uh, livery, which is the other one of these kits, is, quote, so vivid you could get drunk looking at it. You know, there's a reason why we can't have nice things in the ideas of, you know, alcohol and tobacco liveries on our race cars because there's, you know, the groups of crazed parents out there that are convinced that, you know, building a model kit or just looking at evil verboten uh, sponsorships are going to cause their kids to become, you know, addicted to drugs and alcohol. Uh, you're not helping anything with that description. Uh 
it's a full detail kit, whereas the Tommy is, of course, is a curbside. Tommy is a pretty basic kit, again, being patterned down from the 120 from the 112 scale kit and sort of plugged into the older uh, 911 chassis that they did for the, uh, the Snap Tight kit and the Speedster. Uh, so you know, it, it it's I guess leaves a little bit to be desired it, it, to a certain extent. This has an engine in it and stuff like that. Also, the wheels turn, which is you know fantastic because we're gonna get on our floor and play with them. Thanks, Ravel. Ravel. Vroom, vroom. Round two has, uh, let's see here, four kits coming out for the month of June. Uh, out of Polar Lights, they're going to be reissuing that 69 Mercury Cyclone NASCAR kit. This time it's going to have the Coca-Cola livery for Bobby Allison. So once again, we're milking this Coca-Cola uh, Coca license for every single penny we can. And on the AMT side of things, they're going to be reissuing the 2017 Chevrolet Camaro 50. That is the full detail kit. You think to yourself reissue it already, yeah, they're going to be doing an Indy 500 pace car version. This would be last year's, so the 2016 Indy 500 uh, pace car version. So uh, for the people who are interested in that sort of thing, um, that's that will be coming out this month. I know there's a lot of people who collect Indy 500 stuff, uh, and you know, I, I would probably uh, go into the idea that a good chunk of these probably won't even get built. They'll be collected by Indy 500 collectors, and that'll just be that. Obviously, uh, the Corvettes that they had done, uh, you know, in the early 2010s, uh, you know, made it viable to pay for the licensing again on this type of thing. And they have two big rigs that are going to be coming out this month. One is the reissue of the white Freightliner. Uh, this one's in the 75th anniversary package uh, that is going to, for the first time, combine the uh, single drive day cab and the dual drive sleeper. Uh, truck into one box. These have been separate kits in the past. Uh, never once have they been packaged together like this. You have a whole bunch of new decals for this, uh, a bunch of liveries and striping packages that have not been available in uh, either. Uh, just wondering why <laughs> I'm getting this weird light <laughs> background thing there, but uh, have not been available in either truck at any time. So some new decals there. And then the other uh, big rig that's coming out this month, and I know this is one a lot of people are, are a great deal more excited about than some Freightliners that you can probably still find on your hobby shop shelf, is the Kenworth W925. This is the first time it's been reissued since 1989, uh, and it has a bunch of parts that have been restored. They haven't specific, you know, been specific about what parts they are. Uh, I would imagine there's probably some, you know, chassis issues there because, uh, you know, the the rumor, the idea that we've all had is the fact that the W925 would never be seen again because it was uh, used as the basis for the conversion to the T600 that they did in the early uh, early 1990s. And, uh, you know, even that kit's never been reissued. I'm guessing that if we are restoring the tooling to this W925, we may never see the T600 again. Um, that's probably not the worst thing in the world, considering the fact that the chassis was completely and totally incorrect for it because it was based on this 1970s truck. Uh, but, you know, it's been interesting to see, you know, if, if we, by restoring this, we've permanently banned the other thing. Yeah, it, I, I suppose it doesn't really matter. I don't know too many people who are sitting around going, man, I wish they'd reissue that T600. I'm guessing I have a, I'm guessing I'm getting a brighter sun and a dimmer sun behind me. That's the problem here. But no, oh, just fight with it, folks. This is information, not my picture. We need to be looking at here. And that takes care of the domestic side of things. So over on the uh, Japanese side of things, B Max is going to be doing the reissue of their T64 Salica rally car. This time for the uh, 1984 Rally of Portugal. This is a tarmac conversion. So you have new wheels, new tires. Uh, there's a new front uh, fascia interface as far as the way the uh, night right night Racing lights go into it. There's not a big bull bar in the front of it like there was on the original kit for the Safari Rally. You also get a bunch of tarmac suspension pieces involved here. There is a specific detail upset for that as well if you're into that sort of thing. Over at Hasegawa, you're going to get the brand new tooling BMW 2000 TII. Uh, the reissue of the Honda N360, this time as the uh, N2 Touring uh, edition. We talked about this in the last Friday video. It's a new grill and a couple other pieces. Not a lot going on there, but it is another version of the N360. Uh, reissue of their uh, 1998 Toyota Corolla rally car. This is for the Monte Carlo rally. Uh, reissue of their venerable Lancia 037 rally car, this time for the 83 rally of San Remo. And then a reissue of their Volkswagen Type 2 cargo truck, this time uh, a reissue of the Moon Eyes uh, livery uh, on that one. 
And then we go over to Aoshima, which of course always has a large list of things going on. Uh, the sort of outside the normal stuff reissues are reissue of the 430 Cedric, uh, the A6 Truno in the Project D box, which of course is the one you always want to go for because that, ha or no, excuse me, that's the middle grade one. Volume 37 is the one you always go for. Uh, reissue of the, of the uh, Pangani, again, you guys bought them all out again. A uh, reissue of the initial D FD 3S RX7 and a reissue of the 1994 Toyota Hilux double cab lift. That's the jacked up monster truck version of that. So those are all just restock reissues. Uh, in the Grand Champion series, there are reissues of the Japan two door late Skyline. That's like a 1983 uh, reissue of the Toyota Celica 1600 GT and reissue of the Ken and Mary four door Skyline. So that's the mid 70s one there. Uh, in the model car lineup, the, this is, you know, boxing into the model cars here, uh, there is a modified reissue of the 72 Skyline 2000 GT, so there's a new front and rear fascia and new wheels in that to make the 72. Uh, reissue of the 1974 Skyline 2000 GTX, again, this has new front and rear fascias uh, to make the 74. Uh, reissue of the 71 Skyline 2000 GT, that is a straight reissue just into the new box. So that, that means that does not have these new uh, genuine hubcaps that the other Skylines are coming with. This will come with the sort of meshy BBS style wheels that are not really BBS wheels. Keep that in mind if you're interested in that car. It does not come with factory stock wheels. It is otherwise a completely factory stock model, however. So, you know, it, it's almost a Fujimi thing. Uh, in the sense that the last several boxings of that kit have shown a completely factory stock car on the box, and you open it up, and shazam, you've got a completely different set of wheels and no factory stock wheels involved. And then lastly, in the model car lineup, you're getting a uh, reissue of the KPC 110 Skyline. So this is, the, again, the 70, or, you know, 70s GTR style Skyline in the Phantom Ken and Mary Racing thing. Uh, this kit was just reissued not that long ago uh, in the Phantom Ken and Mary thing. Uh, it is sort of a take on the Japanese Grand Prix uh, Skylines that raced in the mid-1970s. However, it is a tribute car rather than an actual race car. And again, that's just a straight reissue being boxed into the new series. Over on the tune model car side of things, these are all just straight reboxes. Uh, are a 99 RX-7 FD3S, this is going to be the Mazda Speed A spec. Uh, the 2010 Toyota Hiace in the Silk Blaze Tuner Van uh, series. Uh, the 1985 Toyota Truno in the uh, Nuremberg 2 spec. So it's the one with the big over fenders and, and whatnot. Uh, that kit does not come with an engine. And a reissue of the 1978 Toyota Hilux Custom. And that is going to be the lowrider version. And then we have two sets of... of wheels in the four package thing. Uh, in the 19 inch side you have the Ativan RS. Uh, the... AVS Model T5, uh, the Enki GTC01, and the Volk RE30s. And on the 20-inch side of things, you have the uh, Leon Hardrit Bugles, the Work Varenza F2S, the SSR Waffen GT03s, and the Club Linea L566. So Google those for images or wait until the, they get reissued later in the month if you don't already know what all of those look like. And I guess the other June kit, uh, because it's been pushed back at this point, would be the uh, Platts Hobby New New BMW M6 GT3. We continue to wait on that. Now, obviously, the kit is coming. It's still in product. It's still you know being produced and, and coming because uh, they showed we 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 put it up uh, what two weeks ago now. Uh, all of or maybe it's just this last video uh, of the pictures of the produced model of the uh, you know of the built test of the built production model with the decals and everything like that. So. Uh, it is, you know, done. We're just waiting on it. So that is still coming. I know a lot of people were concerned that it, it sort of just faded off into the wayside. And it's still coming. They showed it at Suzuka. It just seems to slide every now and then. So we'll see. We'll see if that comes out or not. And, uh, guys, I believe that is it. So that is where your money is going for the month of June. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys on the other side.